Hey, girl. Oh, 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 Thanks for rescuing me from the bio-infested innards of that ferocious sea monster. Actually, it was just a very large fish. It seemed like a monster to me. Yeah, that was must have been traumatizing for you. Thanks for rescuing my partner. I think nothing of it. No, honestly, I'm rather pleased. How about a tankard of my finest ginger beer on the house? Oh, uh, perhaps later. Then please accept this modest little trinket instead. I'm glad to see Jolly in good spirits. He's his old Jolly self again. Oh, also, I have two doubloons. Can I get a glass of water for Captain Black Eye? Thanks again. I guess not. Thanks again, and remember, it's Grab a Sailor Night in here every Wednesday. I think we'll give it a miss. <laughs> it's very popular. One doubloon gets you five tankards of Seaman's Brew. Yeah, I don't want Seaman's Brew. He puts too much salt in it. I like my beef stew with a good amount of salt, but not that much. Alright, actually no, we're not gonna warp. Oh, Locker's Cavern is the other place, and there was a weird fish icon there. Whoops. We're gonna go back down to this crater down here, because now that we have Talon Torpedo, there's something we can do. It probably caught your eye earlier, there's this giant, like, structure here with bright lights. Well, there's a Kazooie icon on the front, and we know what that means if it's underwater. It means Talon Torpedo! Let's go inside here. Inside the UFO. There is a UFO in this world, believe it or not. Greetings, feeble airplanes. Whoa, real aliens! Are any of you called Elvis? No, we're Elf, Betty, and Gamo. We're also in a bit of a fix. Let me guess. You need to phone home. <laughs> now we have a cell phone for that. The drive unit on our ship has run out of fuel. It's powered by crystallized ice, but we don't have any. I'm sure we'll be able to sort something out. Uh, yep, there is just a flat-out UFO in this game, which is kind of amazing. Our ship has run out of fuel, as we have no ice to power it. Not so superior now, are we? <laughs> oh, hey, Jinjo, what's up? Talk on it. It's another mean joke. Take that. <laughs> we also have a ferocious mean joke on board. What do you think of that? I hate it. Our ship has run out of fuel, as we have no ice to power it. Oh, they all say the same thing. That guy's got some ray guns. That guy over here... Well, they're in the dark, it's hard to see. Alright, we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna stand in the middle here, and then there are these, uh, engines over here. We're gonna shoot the ice engine too. Power up the other crystals quickly! We only have 20 seconds. Standing in the middle is definitely the easiest way to do this. Thank you, Airflame Bear and Bird. Now please exit our ship as we need to leave. We are late for dinner. Er, uh, any chance of a reward? Ah, uh, we landed on a shiny thing. You may have that. Now go! Gee, thanks. <laughs> so that guy has a magic wand or something. That guy's got some laser guns. That guy's got, um, a wrench and something metal. Is that a cowbell? That's kind of funny. Alright, here's where we entered from. <laughs> That's such a random thing to put in the world, but I love it. UFO, in, like, sunk underwater. Main drive engaged. Activating Navi scanners. Strange glowing lights on. <laughs> All systems are go. Now let's get out of this awful earthling water and find the kids. I think they ejected somewhere over a snowy mountain. If it's Freezeezy Peak, then you missed it. That was in the last game.
<laughs> I love how the strange goalie lights have no purpose other than to just be strange goalie lights. Yeah, uh, their, their UFO landed on a jiggy. Thank goodness for that. What a lame reward from them, though. They were just like, oh, our UFO sat on an urchin. You can have it. Gee, th you can keep the gas can, putt putt. Gee, gee thanks, Mrs. Airbag. All right. We're also going to go back to Smuggler's Cavern. If you'll remember, there was that pipe with Kazooie's face on it. Again, Talon Torpedo. It's the end-all, be-all savior to everything. Also, there's the Cheeto page and the transparent fish here. We're going to grab that as well. Ow! Puffer fish. Underwater controls are not the best. Where did the transparent fish go? Try that again. Thank goodness red feathers are basically useless in this game. Where did the transparent fish go? Why is the hitbox on it so bad? I knew there was a reason I didn't like Jolly Rogers Lagoon that much. There we go. Hurry to this. Blam! Okay, good. We blew up the pipe and got the prize. Good. Now let's go back to that pipe we just blew up, if we can find it. There we go. Here it is. And if we swim inside, we get to a very interesting place. First off, the water supply pipe for Grunty Industries. So we can freeze these fans by shooting ice eggs into their cores. You're definitely going to want to do that. Grunty Industries, eh? Haven't heard of that place yet. But actually, we kind of have. For you see, we're about to go back to World 6. There are two different warps to World 6 that we can't do anything with. So here we are. Basement back in the waste disposal plant, like where we were earlier. And there's a blue Jinjo here. And we can see through another window that we can't break through into part of the world. And if you see at the very end there, there's that Jiggy Crate. That's the exact same Jiggy Crate we saw from the other window of the Waste Disposal Plant. So this is a nice little sneak peek at World 6, which is um, Grunty Industries, if you couldn't tell. Yeah, that's a famous world in the game. Very famous. Usually famous for the wrong reasons. Oh, hey, you can actually go to the surface. I didn't know that. Well, we're gonna just keep swimming and go back, because that's liter it's literally just a tiny little self-contained thing. However, the Jinjo that we collected there counts as a Jinjo for World 6, not for Jolly Rogers and Boone. So once we actually enter World 6 for realsies, we'll, it, it'll say we already have a Jinjo saved. Yeah, ice eggs have a lot of utility in this game, which I actually really like. I feel like fire eggs have hardly any utility, but ice eggs have a ton. We're gonna go back to Atlantis, because there's still a small portion of the level that we've not explored yet. Actually, there's a couple of small portions of the level we haven't explored yet. So I believe that way up there leads to a cave that we can go to. I'm not gonna go that way. I'm instead gonna go this way down this tunnel. I don't think this takes us back. No, this is the way we're supposed to go. I think. Or is this the place I was trying to avoid? Never mind, no. This is... Never mind. Future already cut this out. So here in Atlantis, from where these mermaid statues are, if you go up, you can see this little uh, hole in the wall here. I believe that's where we came from, uh, from the other side of the course, however, but I'm um, from just the bottom of the crater. But if we keep going down here, there's this nice little secret passageway down here. 
kind of well hidden. If we go down here, there's another octopus who's moving very fast. But we're going to freeze him like we freeze, uh, froze all the others. And this takes us to a sunken ship. That's pretty cool. At the top of the sunken ship is our final warp pad, which we're probably never really going to use. this take us? Back to the sea bottom, eh? Okay. Freeze the octopus. I actually forgot that this place linked up with the sea bottom. But sure enough, it does. There's this little hole in the wall here. Hmm. I totally forgot about that. <laughs> Even I learned something new. Okay, I guess we will be taking the warp pad back to the sun and ship then, because there is other stuff to explore there. I don't want to use the warp pad, bro. I just want to swim away from it. Alright. <laughs> Alright, let's try that again. <laughs> Why are the pufferfish always the most annoying enemies in underwater levels? All right, we're gonna use Talon Torpedo. There's this Jinjo chest here, which we can break open. With, again, Talon Torpedo. Collect another purple Jinjo, which gives us four, and break open that Kazooie uh, sewer pipe. Also, I'm not sure if it's ever confirmed, but it's implied the sunken ship is the Salty Blubber, or the Salty Hippo, from which is the Treasure Trove Cove's uh, sunken ship that Captain Blubber owned. All right, water supply pipe for Glitter Gulch Mine. That's right. Glitter Gold Shrine gets its water from Jolly Roger's Lagoon. So you can, you're can you seeing the interconnectivity between the worlds a lot in this one. Oh crap. Thank goodness I froze it in time. Swim through here. And this sets us on top of this giant uh, water barrel in the water storage with a blue Jinjo on top. You'll remember that was the Jinjo that we saw up here that we couldn't reach earlier. And that's because we need to land up here. Now, we could just explore Glitter Gulch Mine, but instead we're going to high jump up to this chain and climb back in the pipe because there's no real reason to go back to Glitter Gulch Mine. Again, we do the backtracking in a different episode. This episode's all about Jolly Rogers Lagoon. And yes, that Jinjo counts for Glitter Gold Mines Jinjos, not Jolly Rogers and Gold Jinjos. Alright, we're here back in Atlantis, and right near the warp pad and the electric eels layer, there's this little alcove here. If we swim through it, this is going to take us to the final part of the level that we really haven't explored. You hear that? That's the sound of a globo. Because that's right, Wumba's Wigwam is on this course that we hadn't seen yet. There's also a transparent fish here. Which what it looks like to be eggs. One of these transparent fishes has a jiggy. I just can't remember which one. Anyhow, if we, sw if we swim to the surface here... Wumba's Wigwam is on the top here. And you'll see the entrance to Wumba's Wigwam is actually underwater. Now, isn't that interesting? Hi, Wumba. <laughs> you have Globo. Want to give to Humba? Sure. She's just chilling, like her house is being flooded. Sure, I'll just throw it in. Magic ready, jump in Wumpa Pool. More like swimming. The whole place is Wumpa Pool. Yeah, you're literally sitting underwater. <laughs> there we go, we ground pound him into it. And this gives us a very interesting transformation. 
Wumba call this submarine. Use control stick to turn on spot and A for much speed. Press B for sonic peen attack or Z for torpedo attack. So most people consider the submarine to be one of the best transformations in the game and I agree. Honestly, this level is a lot more fun if you use the submarine, and particularly if you use the submarine in first person mode. As we have infinite torpedoes that are basically homing grenade eggs. They are really good. We cannot enter the transparent fishes. However, we are very fast. We have unlimited homing grenade eggs, and our sonic pain attack will make like a little shockwave, and that will actually freeze the octopuses and basically every enemy in place. It's fantastic. Oh, is that? That's the one with the jiggy right there. Pfft. Okay, we'll grab that one later. In the meantime, where's the warp? I, I just passed the warp. The warp is right next to the cavern. T uh, let's warp to the town center. Submarines don't work too well on land. Well, okay, that's fair. Let's go to Locker's Cavern. We're honestly nearing the end of the level. We've explored basically everything, but... You'll remember there's this little pit here in the sea bottom that they're like, you can't go in there. The current, or the water pressure is too great. Well, it's not too great for a submarine. Let's go on in. Got down here at last, eh? How about trying my little shooting challenge? Score 60 points and I might give you a prize. Do you need instructions? Yes, please. I've littered this place with lovely mines, which hopefully you'll run into. Destroy my mines to score ill-deserved points. Blue ones are worth three points. Green ones get you two points. And only one point for the feeble red ones. Ready? Three, two, one, go! This is where first person mode is going to help. And yeah, the fact that um, these are homing just makes this game pretty easy. Again, the homing torpedoes are basically the same as homing eggs, except you don't even need the homing eggs to be able for you to get homing uh, torpedoes. So you don't even need to aim well. You can literally just shoot everywhere. Just keep in mind that you do need to get... You, have, you can't be too far away from them for these to work. And also, you can only have a certain amount of torpedoes on screen at once. Other than that, though, really easy challenge. This, again, first person mode really helps with this. I don't think the Sonic Pain Attack does anything. It's literally just there so you can get past the octopuses. So, normally, I would say, um, if you want to explore this level, then I'd recommend exploring it as the submarine. And also, we probably should have blown up the Big Fish's teeth with the submarine. Rats! You luckily scored enough points to win my prize! That's one of the easiest minigames in the game. <laughs> Thanks, Grunty. There's the Jiggy. Ah, uh, do you want to play again? No, you're not giving out any prizes. <laughs> And that'll just warp you out. Okie dokie. So, I probably, in hindsight, should have explored the level as the submarine. That, trust me, it's way more fun to explore the level as the submarine and way easier. So I messed up there. I thought there was more to do with the submarine, but no, you know. We go to the totals. We only have five out of the ten jiggies. Uh, we can get two more, but there are three Jiggies that we actually can't get on this time through. There's one Cheeto page that we can't get, and the Hollow Honeycomb piece, I think we can get that somewhere. Maybe I missed that somewhere. Oh well. I'm still gonna explore around a bit more. Let's go to the sunken ship as the submarine. Maybe there's, maybe there is something hidden in the, uh in the sunken ship, like a honey hollow honeycomb. Or maybe not. Okay. I actually forget where that last hollow honeycomb piece is. Maybe, maybe there was a, uh... 
It's possible that there was a transparent fish that had it that I missed, but I thought I got the one from the transparent fish. Okay, yeah. When you reach the octopus, for some reason, your um, sonic pain attack will just instantly freeze it. I don't know how that works, but whatever. It's a way to justify the submarine being able to get past the octopus, so I'm okay with it. So James Jarrett said that submarines don't work well on land. Well, he's wrong. <laughs> submarines work just fine on land. Bam, bam, bam. Unfortunately, we can't get up the stairs. So that's a bit of a problem. Hey, hey, kids! You want to ride on Banjo the Submarine? I'm real trustworthy. Kablam, kablam, kablam. Sorry, but I'll only talk for Banjo or Kazooie. Okay. What are you talking about, kids? <laughs> Look at the fun we can have. Oh, man, this swimming pool is so great. I love it. I can't believe you don't want to swim in this. Oh, I just blew myself up. You kids are wusses. This, this water is just fine. <laughs> Unfortunately, we can't reach the warp pad up here, which is a shame, but... Huh. I'm still trying to figure out where that last hollow honeycomb piece is. I might have to look that up.